Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and I'm here with some example of play of World at War 85, Blood and Fury. I decided to go ahead and record this, because I can feel a cold coming on, and I want to get some footage done before uh, I'm all congested and all that good stuff. So, we're going to jump into this uh, scenario, the scenario three, by their deeds alone, from the uh, big companion book that comes with the game. And this, this, I picked this one because this one's going to be one-sided as all hell. The Americans are way outnumbered. So, in this, the Americans have a blot. Actually, I'll just show you here on our companion book. Why not? See, the Americans have this area to set up in. The objective for the Soviets is to take the city and to exit as many units as possible back here. And I was trying to decide, you know, what's the, the, the best way to defend here? Because the Americans only have three tanks. They have a couple of Bradleys, a anti-air vehicle, one of those Vulcan thingies, and infantry with some tow missiles, and that's it. All right, that's all they... I mean, they got some off-board artillery, but so do the Soviets, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, they do have, in the second turn some Apaches that can show up and help because they have high rate of fire AG, which means they can use that against armored targets. So that's going to help the Americans, but they got to hold off against overwhelming Soviet forces. They're going to be coming in. So starting off for the Soviets, we've got a couple of T-80s. Uh, which one is this? This is their anti-air. This is the Shilka. They got a Shilka, and then they've got three APCs with infantry and of course the HQ. This, okay, it's a close-ish fight. I'd put my money on the Americans, you know, in this this setup, right? This this matchup. But that's not all that's coming in. The next turn, we have more coming in. And the turn after that, we have even more Soviets coming in. This is the huge stack of Soviets that are going to be coming in. So, we see here, this is the order of battle card that's going to be applied for the Soviet uh, 3rd Battalion to uh, 200th Guards Motor Rifle Regiment. So, they start with initiative, which means we actually don't draw a card to start with. These guys come onto the board first. It makes sense because if they weren't coming onto the board, if the Americans draw their card, it's just a waste. So, the uh, Soviets going to start with initiative. And then it shows us here Turn two, here's my two Apaches coming in. Turn three is the light blue ones. So that's that and all of these guys. Oh, I had it backwards. Yep. So we are going to have, good God, look at this. They have the 1st Battalion, 48th Guards, Tank Regiment coming in on turn three. Ten T-80s. Ten T-80s. Uh, three more BMPs, three more infantry, uh, and some missile launchers, which sadly are going to be anti-air. So if they decide to deploy this infantry, they could make hell for my Apaches. Then, also on turn three, uh, oh, I was right, they are both turn three. I was thinking this was turn four. Huh? Look at that. The uh, 245th Guards Motor Rifle is going to come in. Three more infantry. Three more BTRs, three T-64s, so how many tanks is it? That's almost 20 tanks. And more missiles, uh, SA-7s and uh, Sager anti-tank guided munitions that can be used by those infantry. And there towards the end of the battle, that's not all. We got a little, a little something else coming in. Uh, turn six, both sides get air support. The Soviets get a SU-25. The Americans get a A-10 that they can bring in. So this is going to be a brutal slogfest. Obviously, the Soviets are going to be pouring their way in uh, down in this uh, direction. Just smashing, smashing the, uh, the American lines. And I was trying to figure out, like, what's the best way to go on the defense here? Because I've got to try to last as long as I can. They're, they're not going to survive. These guys are just roadblocks. Right, but it's how long. And besides, these aren't even Abrams; these are Pattons, which means they have less range and a little bit less armor, I believe. So that's not good. 
their armor's uh, t actually worse than the T-80s. The T-80s roll four dice, hitting uh, saving on fives. The M-60s only roll three dice, saving on fives. But I get two improved positions, which I have put out. That blocks the first hit. I put this guy up here on the hill, and I tried. I was like, uh, instead of going hard, you know, let's uh, let's ease it back a little bit. I had originally placed them here on the ridge, so they could see and light all these guys up. Problem with that is if they can see, they can be seen, and they'd be eventually shot up. Even if I had both improvement uh, positions up there, the two tanks would go down under withering fire. Uh, the BMPs have missiles, good range, good firepower. Uh, the BTRs have some missiles, I believe, as well. And that's a BMP. I have to look. But regardless, they've got enough missiles to take out two tanks. Instead, I figured I'd hold back in the city. Use the hill as cover, right? Keep them from being able to see me until they round the corner. Uh, infantry are being sacrificed up front. They're slow. They can't really move that fast. So I'm going to leave them out of the Bradley. I thought about leaving the infantry back in the back as like a last ditch effort. You know, they've got missiles. They can fire back there. But I want to keep everyone within uh, four hexes of the HQ. And the HQ I'm going to be placing here. and Because uh, otherwise they'd be out of command. Right? So, yeah, the HQ could fall back and blah, 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 blah. But... And this way, this will work. Uh, Bradley here. Like I said, I think I got another Brad. No, that's the Vulcan. The other Bradley's over there. Use him to call in some artillery. Some anti-tank or anti-personnel uh, mines that I can call in for the Americans that will help slow things down. If I hit this with some mines and then hit them with the MLRS. I've got one shot of those, and that will hit. If it hits the hex, it hits all six hexes around it. So if I can catch a group of Soviets bunched up, I can bomb the shit out of them. But they're probably going to be coming in a line. That's my thought. They'll come around, you know, down over this way. And as they come, the tanks here can shoot up and try to pick them off, uh, you know, in a doorway. Slow them down a little bit. Same with this tank back here. Two improved positions and the fact that if the, this guy gets a line of sight, if they shoot at him since he's on a hill, he gets an extra uh, D6 defense. So it's defensive as I can be for my tanks. I want them to last as long as possible. We are going to be using the Solitaire cards. I've already got them set up. Uh, specialized cards are used. It does list it down in our... A little thingamajig here tells you all the cards that they use and the only difference is for some variety to this game it says roll 1d6 uh to determine which of the three starting points the soviets are going to come in instead of doing that and sending all of their guys through that one point i'm going to do 1d6 for each of these formations so there's a road here there's a road here and there's a road way up here just off camera that they can come down. This way, it uh, gives me a little randomness. I don't know exactly where they're going to be coming from. They can be coming from the bottom. They can come from the top. They can come straight from the side. But uh, we'll just let fate decide. I've got my formation cards to start with. Uh, to start, we're only going to have five cards. The Americans do get two. Uh, it shows that in your order of battle. We're going to have two end of operations. And it, the battlefield event could be included but it was such a rare chance for it to happen i was like screw it i'm just gonna leave that card out and then one card for them again remember this is the stats for the leadership the number rolled for different checks like morale checks and the like for the units you can see the soviets are a little bit lower and their command range uh hq in good form it's the farther the bigger number if the hq is reduced flip to its backside then it is the smaller number. That's why I'm keeping these guys within four hexes, because that's the reduced number for the Americans. This way, no matter what happens, even if the HQ gets reduced, I still got everybody within the four needed hexes. Also, if you're playing the scenario, you will need... Oh, yeah, we're going to leave that one out. 
cards for all the other stuff that gets added. So we get a couple for our Apaches. We get the Warthog, the SU-25, and the two other formations. So the Soviets will get one activation for each of their formations, while the Americans will get two activations. The Americans will be able to fire more often, but there's less of them. So they need to hit when they're shooting. Only other difference is, for my game, I am using the red and blue dice. I do not have the green dice because David kept them. Damn you, David. Damn you with my green dice. No, actually, these are very, very nice dice that he sent me a while back. Gravity dice. Nice little magnetic tray here. I love these dice. I use them all the time. So we've got these to use, but these are not standard in World War 85. That's something special that he sent me, which I really appreciated. So let's get these off the table and get ready to get started. I think uh, these gray ones go with this deck. All right, so these guys aren't on the map. I just have them set there to the side for a second while we determine which one of these that they're coming in. And let's go ahead and draw a card. I don't technically really have to draw a card uh, for them because I know they're just going to be entering the, the board, the map, but I just want to see what they're going to get. Uh, no one is in... The, the top of this is danger close. So one, two, or three hexes. None of them are within one, two, or three hexes. AEO is automated enemy opponent, I believe. Closest to a PU player unit, fire. So basically you just read this down. Uh, none of them are on the board. So we'll just go with the move closest uh, towards the target. Yeah, move towards the objective. Since we know that's what they've got to go towards now. So how do we want to pull these guys on the board? I'm trying to decide if it's best to lead with the T-80s or lead with the BMPs. Don't forget the BMPs have infantry in them as well. All right, so let's roll real quick for their entry point. And that is a three. I forgot to pull the dice straight down. And that means they are coming in the center so they're coming in this one we've got a b and c or a b and c whichever it doesn't matter middle roll so they're coming in there off of this road they can follow this road south or they can cut straight through the tree line let's grab our uh, train effects chart to see how much that's going to cost them to move through okay so pretty much them moving it's one for all the clear terrain it's two for woods, and it's going to be three for rough, but they're not any rough. Two for city. So either one for the road or clear, or two for the city or the... Any of this. Any of the farm, any of the city, any of the forest. That's going to cost them two. You know, I might spread out a little bit just to, to see how this is going to start. Send some into this forest, send some down through here. That way they can swing around, keep the HQ somewhere in the middle. All right, we're going to put our HQ with our Vulcan unit. And let's start with one of the BMPs since we got three of those, and we'll kind of intersperse the, the other tanks in with it. So we got one, two. I think that's blocking a lot of sight. Yeah, because if we trace the center, that's going to cross that city. Yep. No line of sight there. If we trace over there. Ah, oh, I missed my laser. My little girls took my laser from me. You know, I have one simple request. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. They're killing me. Daddy needs his laser. Let's see. I think we can, yep. We can get a line of sight up to the next forested hex. Let's take our tank and put it there. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. I need to mark this one complete. And this one, when it hits here, I know I'm gonna up fire with them, the infantry onto him. But let's check his move and fire real quick first. For moving and firing for the Soviets. So we packed allies. He's got orange. Nice. Oh, more. It's two, because that's more than half his his movement 
Oh, I'm not. I'm firing at infantry. I'm firing at infantry, which means HE value. That's only a range of six. <gasps> he can't shoot there. I was looking at his 12. Just thinking he can fire. He can't do the move and fire anyway. But the infantry can up fire against him, so we'll go ahead and have the infantry do that. They get to fire with their missile, which we do have to do a missile check for. They get four dice. I will add in one extra. And he's going to get four plus one, I believe, for the forced. Yes, the tank is going to get just one D6 bonus for being in the force. That's still five die. Uh, so we have four die attack against the T80 with five defense dice for the T80. Gravity dice, do your what? Come on, big hits. That's big hits. I'll take that. That's three out of four. So we have three hits. Set that was right there. Set it. Weak low die away, and now he needs fives on these dice. No modifier to apply. He's just getting the one extra d6. So he needs three of them to be over to five. Oh, and he only got one. Thought it was two there for a second. He got the one, so we blocked out one, which means two remaining hits. So he will become disrupted and reduced leave him there he'll try to remove that disruption later and that also means that i've shot my load he's marked as ops complete and that is the only one i think i got line of sight with this guy is blocked off i think he can fire down past that hill the hills get a little tricky with the line of sight let's let's get the rest of the soviets on because i don't think i'm gonna put too many up there Let's see, we got our HQ here, we got this, we just brought on tanks, let's bring in another BMP. It's one, two, three, four, five, I can't get there. Four, I can go five, six, you yeah, know, go five, six, we'll end him there so he's in the city. I want to try to make sure all these guys are within range for their next activation, which means I should bring my commander next. Yeah. Let's see, what is there? He's got a range of four. Range of four, so he's down here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he'd still be in range. Oh, one, two, three is one, two, three. Yeah, if he gets to there, he's good. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, no, that is not six. That is five. He is slower. So we'll put the HQ with the BMP here, and we'll have the BMP lead the charge down here. We're making a quick change, and our last T-80 is going to come in, and should I bring him over there? Yeah, I'll bring him over here to line things up. Ops complete. Ops complete. Ops complete. Ops complete for all of them. I like these new round uh tokens i like this they stand out a little bit easier than those previous ones did i like that that's a good call and that wasn't even the 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 start that was just the initial impulse now we start drawing cards we hadn't even drawn a card yet Oh, and I'm sitting here thinking about it. Oh, if I had more guys in range of fire. But if I had more guys who could shoot, like I said, these guys up on the hill, they'd get a few shots off, but overwhelming fire would push them back. So, yeah. Ugh, I want to be able to shoot with more of them besides. Oh, I forgot to do my missile check. Let me not forget to do that. All right, so let's do our missile check, and we are good. We got a six. Since their leadership value is a seven, anything seven or under means that they are good. Had he failed that, I would have to put a missile reloading marker on him, which means I would have to try to remove that missile reloading on their next formation activation. The Americans have it a little bit easier than the Soviets do. Let me see if I can find that chart. I'll show you guys what I mean. Missile usage chart. So if the missile reload fails... Right When you do your little check over here, you put the missile reload. Now, if the firing unit type has this missile reload thing and they fail it again, 
this is what they get. So the Americans will leave the missile reloading, whereas the Soviets, with some of their missile units, uh, will place a no ammo. And let's see, that's for their armaments. Alternative armaments for tanks, anti-tank guns, dedicated anti-tank guided missile vehicles, and helicopters, infantry fighting vehicles with those. Oh, yeah. So all of their BMPs here would get a no missile ammo if they fail that again. So it is very easy for the Soviets to run out of missiles. Uh, what I heard from the designer of the game is it basically some of, uh, signified the fact that the Americans had more uh, transport trucks and reloading trucks and, and the like back in their rear. They had more ammo back there prepared, whereas the Soviets were pushing forward or would be pushing forward and didn't have as much ammo readily available. So they're more likely to run out of those heavier arms than the Americans were. All right, so let's draw our first card, and our first card is going to be the Americans. Does not do us too much good, because the Americans can only simply remove their one activation. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I can do? Do I... I'm, I want to save my, my strikes, because I could call in artillery, or I could call in the mines, but I want to drop these mines i've got three of these minefields i can drop these are indiscriminate uh, indiscriminate minefields randoms so you can have well that's not on the back side there are some that are in rows that means they are not dangerous to friendlies these are dangerous to everyone so both sides could be hurt by it but i don't really want to use these as like mines i want to use it as like an artillery strike and drop it directly on top of them because you stand a good chance of doing damage that way. But I'm holding that. I want to wait till some Soviet units uh, units get about here and call it in on them. I don't want to move these guys out of their improved positions. I don't want to move. a breath. Like if I could move fire and then move back, I would do it. But I can't do that. And if I move out now, anything that I have will get blatted. So I'm trying to hold it as long as possible. I think we'll just do the one activation I can. Infantry who are in the front of the city. Don't forget the Soviets have to get all three of these hexes. That's their objective and to exit off. Uh, I think we'll just do that. So we'll line it back up like we had it. And that was the defense. We'll try to finish off this remaining T-80. Because why not? You know, we got some fire going for it. Come on. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. Oh, God. One. No. Just one. Oh, that's going to be bad. They'll get at least one to block it. Yep. There it is. God. One hit was all I freaking needed. You couldn't give me. Couldn't give me one damn hit. That was a waste of an American activation. Tremendous waste. And before I forget, we'll do our missile reload check. And we're good. We got a seven. Sure. Let's draw our next card. Our next card is going to be the 200th. They are activating. So it's these guys they get to pull off all of these activation markers. And they get to make an attempt to remove this disruption. Now, if the HQ is with him, that would help. But he is not, so he does not get to remove that. Or it doesn't get the bonus. He would get the two modifier. He has to roll for the disruption. And he got a 10. That is not going to be enough for them to remove the disruption. So he stays disrupted. I almost forgot. I wish I had. He gets a ops complete marker. She is knit. Uh, it'll get removed at their next activation. The Americans do have another activation, but I can't use it just yet. That means they're pretty well free to move, and I might take this time just to move them into some defensive positions. I'm going to move. I'm going to kind of keep this one in the back. 
Uh, no, he needs to get into that city to go along. He can't move closer to enemies because he's disrupted. So we'll go two, four. We'll stop him there. He'll keep going along. So there we go. I was going to say we'll pick up with the next video, but I, I've only got three cards left, and two of them are the end of turn. So really there's no reason not to go ahead and just uh, run it out and see what we got. Next card is... is Ah, it's not an end of turn. It is the Americans, which means those two are end of turn. So the end of turn will come next. Let's finish out the Americans' uh, activation. Remove his ops complete. And that is... No, nope. see, that's two hexes of blocking. I was thinking I might fire with this Bradley, but that is a hex side of blocking, and this is a hex side of blocking. If that hill was one shorter... The Bradley would have a line of fire, but he does not. I could call in the mines. <sighs> Are these guys dangerous enough? Let's see. Tanks there. The other tank's wounded. Uh, we'll wait. We'll wait on that. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just fire with my American missiles one last time. That's the only thing I can do because I'm still playing it safe. Or I'm going to burn myself on it, but yeah, nothing else. <laughs> Their stats are range one for AP and range two for HE. So infantry by themselves can only reach out like that far. They need support weapons to actually do something in this game, but I don't think I'm going to go after that tank. And there was actually a degrading terrain there. I might not have been able to shoot at it. <gasps> no, wait. I checked it. That line of fire. I think I did cross that degrading, but eh. Wouldn't have mattered anyway if it did cross one of the cultivated. It doesn't uh, give a modifier for it. And I would need to cross two for it to be, uh, to, for it to be blocking. So it doesn't matter for that. Uh, instead, let's do this. I'm going to fire at this closest fool. Because he's hauling American, or not American, he's hauling troops, and he's got the HQ with him right there at the front. So he gets plus one for the for the city, and then his own defense of five. So he only gets two die now against my four, so that'll work out better. I don't think the HQ gets to help him on that now the hq will only help him when it comes to firing which means i really want to get rid of this front guy because i do not want him rolling six dice at me trying to blow something up or five. Oh no he's too short at he yeah that missiles is the problem but that missile can go after only armored targets vehicular targets which he is not and he doesn't have line of sight to the rest all right okay now, technically, in the game, you one of these would be a green because it's coming from terrain. But, like I said, I don't have green. Well, I've got green in my my bullet dice. really love these things, too, by the way. Yeah. Lock and load publishing. But we're going to just stack it up this way. All right. Come on. Big hit. Big hit. Big money. Big money. Oh. <gasps> Three hits. Oh, I will take it. Yes, I will take it. This, this is good. We might have something going here. If he misses, and both of these need to be a five, then that would be enough to eliminate the vehicle, which could potentially eliminate the infantry, and it could also reduce their HQ. Does he save it? No, he does not. He got a four and a two. He lost it. That is three hits going through. First hit will disrupt. Second hit will uh, reduce. Third hit will eliminate. So this is going to go into the casualties box that I've got here at the very, very top of the board. We're not going to be up there on that part of the map, so I don't need to worry about it. Now we've got to figure out what happens to our infantry and our HQ. The infantry, I know, on a 1, 2, 3, they are reduced and disrupted in the hex. On a 4, 5, 6, they are eliminated. They are reduced and disrupted. 
Now the HQ, I have to double check, but I think it's similar role. All right, I might be off with this, but uh, if I read the rules correctly, then this unit still being there, the HQ might be able to stay with it. Uh, I think on this, because the vehicle it was in was eliminated, that it is going to be reduced either way. It's just whether or not it gets pushed pushed into the uh, suppressed box for the HQ, which it does. So our HQ is reduced and it is pushed into the suppressed HQ box. It will come out on the next activation for this unit, uh, but their HQ is going to be reduced from here on out. So that's going to be reduced range for those guys. Command range, I mean. Uh, that was probably my goof. I was forgetting the fact that missiles don't affect infantry because I was planning on firing some of their missiles at it and then I goofed over here with this tank looking at its AP range rather than its HE range which was shorter. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they can only reach here with its HE. Actually putting the infantry right up front with a missile launcher has done fairly well for me. And since I can't remember if I rolled for a missile check for them, we'll do it one more again. And they are good. Got a four. They've gotten lucky so far on their missile checks. But remember, if they do not get, they fail that, then they're marked as missile reloading, which means he would have to check to see if he reloaded on his next activation. And if he didn't, he wouldn't be able to shoot anymore, which would be a problem because right now he's my sniper. Keep everything at bay. This means the Soviets got to get in something with some HE firepower close enough to reduce this infantry down, get rid of this missile launcher because it's messing their shit up right now. I've got a chance actually to, to push them back or hold them back because if they race forward to go after the infantry, then the other guns that I have, like one more hex forward and this tank will have them on a line of fire. I've got him traced right along through here. So they have to stay south at this point to stay out of this tank's line of fire. So that would give me an extra gun if they push towards the infantry, which they really need to do because otherwise the infantry is going to keep messing their shit up. Next turn, we still keep rolling this but I get to add Apaches to the mix. So there's a good chance I can cause a lot of damage to these guys before they're able to uh, get reinforcements coming in. That's cool. Only problem is, is that the Soviets do have this, which is anti-air. It does have the ability to use anti-air, and it outranges my Apaches, and my Apaches don't have very good armor. I mean, it's not bad for an air vehicle, but two dice hitting on fives, really not that good. So I'm going to have to find a way to get them in the fight without him seeing, which means flying down nape of the earth. Bring it down as close as possible. Try to use the city or the hills as cover so these guys can start putting rounds down range. And remember, they have high rate of fire, so they can fire at armored targets. All right, but you guys stay tuned. We'll pick up with the uh, the next turn, and we'll see how it plays out. Our Apaches are coming in. The Soviets have taken a little bit of a punch on the chin. Not too much damage. They've lost a, a BMP and a weakened tank, and their HQ has been suppressed, so uh, not too bad. As far as scoring goes, scoring is going to be important because... The guys who are exiting the map for points only count the BMPs and the infantry if both of them exit. So you can't uh, lose your infantry or lose your BMP. you got to have both of those guys make it out. Of course, the, uh, the tanks and the other vehicles all count towards victory points. All right, but you guys stay tuned. We'll have some more coming up. And don't forget, I'm going to do that huge playthrough as soon as the big map arrives. All right, that's going to be it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one.